so the models of uh, urban morphology uh, we have the first one which is a concentric zonation model which is given by burgers and parks this is one of the very first models so according to them a city develops as concentric rings around the cbd so the two main factors for this is uh, first one is land rental so distance decay of land rental as we move away from the cbd the land rent keeps on decreasing so people want to move away from the cbd for lower rents and uh, social and economic process of invasion and displacement so the migrants are attracted for, towards the cbd because of the economic reasons so they start settling down around, around here now rich move away because they because of more coding so this is the invasion and displacement invasion by the migrants and displacement of the rich people so as we move away from the cbd the social and economic status keeps on increasing so this is the model we have the cbd here if you have the here we have the transition zone which have slums and all other shanty towns here we have low class dwellings middle class dwellings and age class dwellings so this is similar to ecological or biological succession which is seen in ecosystem development also the assumption here is that same accessibility from all sides but it won't be the same which will be corrected by the sectoral model which is the next model we are going to see so in reality the city expands disproportionately in some directions which will be told by the sectoral model also the uh, comparing the cbds we have two types american cbd and asian or european cbd so american CD, cbd it will be dead after office hours it will be <coughs> open throughout the late night and here there won't be any restrictions people come here work and they go back here uh, the rest, uh, old and influential people will be living here here there will not be any factors because of very high rent here it will be there will be factors because it was a very old and old uh, historical and cultural influence and here there will be high renters here also there will be high renters tall buildings will be more here there won't be as many tall buildings here it is a cultural center it will be dead after the night it's only a working place these are highly planned these are not planned there is mixed land use here there is no mixed land use here there is mixed land use because of the history and culture and uh, only high-end retail firms work here all types of mixed land use is seen here same example sir USA, Singapore, Hong Kong and Dubai, it is seen in Paris, London, Delhi and Kolkata. Next we have the sectoral model given by Hyatt. This is a variant of a um, concentric zonation model. So according to him, concentric nature of the city expansion is disrupted because of two reasons, which is economic and, so economic and social factors and uh, connectivity factors. First of all, economic and social factors. Similar activities, they stay together. For example, wherever there is a factory, there will be workers nearby. And class and social segregation, uh, rich and poor, they separate. And uh, these are these are first factors. Second factor is connectivity. So the transport roads also they disrupt the city's expansion, concentric model. So here we can see this is a CBD and it is not perfectly concentric, it is disrupted. This is the wholesale uh, and the light manufacturing. Always the lower class and working class, they, ne they live nearby the working places. So live, they live here and high class the people, they move far away because they want big houses and they, they don't want any crowding. There will be a commuter zone because uh, rent will be very low here and uh, because of the development of the modern transport systems. Next, we have multiple nuclear model given by Harris and Ullman. So according to them, city expansion is not regular and it won't happen in any particular shape. Uh, related and dependent functions, they attract and agglomerate and unrelated functions, they repel. For example, heavy engineering units, they come in one place and uh, light manufacturing units, they go to another place. Also, a single CBD may not be able to serve all the needs of expanding city. Therefore, subsidiary need is, CBDs will pop up. Later, they will specialize and complement the main CBD. For example, in Delhi, Kirtinagar is known for furniture. Nehru place is for computers and Saraji market is for clothes. Also, two types of segregation can be seen in this model, which is functional segregation. Uh, like I said, uh, heavy engineering versus light manufacturing and social uh, segregation, rich versus poor. So here we have it. One is this is a CBD, and around this is a uh, wholesale and light manufacturing. Always low class lives near the working place, and the middle class and uh, <coughs> higher class live here. This is the outlying CBD which is developing uh, recently, and uh, this is the heavy industry manufacturing units, and um, this is the industrial suburb, and this is a residential suburb. Industrial suburb because it is near to industry, and residential because it is close to residential areas. Next, we have the exploding city model given by the Brieford Watson. So, according to him also, there is no particular shape for city morphology. City grows around the city core, but the expansion can be of three types, which are urban sprawl, linear or ribbon expansions, and leapfrogging. Urban sprawl is haphazard and unplayed ground around the city core. This is a city core. Urban sprawl is happening here. Linear or ribbon settlements happen along a transport road. So, these are, these are generally planned. And leapfrogging are discrete settlements that pop up around the urban areas because of the low rentals and etc. So this can be of checkerboard sprawl or the leapfrog <coughs> settlements that can be seen here. Next we have the 
urban development edge city model this is popularized by joel guru in his edge cities life in frontiers so all the four models we have seen these were mostly given in 1920s so during those times transport was very poor and communication was very poor but in the modern times due to the motorways expansion and modern transport and uh, ict improvement the smaller cities and towns are the main city they are able to diversify their functions and specialize their functions therefore these cities they become edge cities uh, so the basically these edge cities they have their own independent and economic and uh, industrial base therefore they are no longer completely dependent on the main city so the new urban morphology is no longer about studying the structure of a single city rather it is about studying about the agglomeration with the main city this is the main city and these are the edge cities also the sphere of influence of the cities should all be, all be studied it together all this together will be called as the urban limb so initially we used to study only about this dot now we are studying this complete thing so this is the new <coughs> urban morphology next we have the example is uh, initially when there was delhi due to the high rent and population people people started moving to gurugram and it developed as a suburb but later due to ict and modern uh, transport the gurugram diversified and specialized in its functions and now it developed its own independent economy so delhi and gurugram are <coughs> gurugram now become a city and uh, it has in between other suburbs now next we have the morphology of indian cities so traditional morphology models they don't apply to india because indian cities are mostly overgrown villages and they have heavy influence of history for example mandapas in ancient times domes and gardens in medieval times rail civil lines forts and ports in british times planned extension in modern times and also the modern elements in urban planning are planned extensions which can be seen in odia's grid model washi in mumbai chandigarh salt lake city in kolkata uh, some <coughs> new elements which are rapidly transforming cities are examples are metros malls and community centers so these are two reasons third reason is segregation is seen in terms of class caste race and communal segregation also cbd of asian cbd is much different than the american cbd so this is the example of uh, segregation in saraspur up so we have jagis living in the center they were living uh, around here balmikis are uh, living far away because they are the lowest caste chamars living here they were some jagis here and this is a communal uh, segregation can be seen muslim living in one area so there are two models for india which are bazaar model and port based model let's see bazaar model so this is the main bazaar it is traditional and cultural center here infra is very poor and congestion is very high next we have uh, <coughs> high class residents living here old nawabs used to live so these are generally the old cities like in hyderabad etc today these are very much neglected now here we have the middle class people who are generally migrants living here and here uh, lower class people like workers and laborers live so these a b c and d are these are linguistic and occupation groups example can be seen in karol bag and these are the planned extensions that are happening <coughs> next we have the port based model so this is the port and this is the port's extension this is a fort to protect the port and the maidan acts as a buffer area so there is a racial segregation seen here natives live here and english europeans who are very rich live here so there is a racial segregation in this model so wealthy bureaucrats and middle class people live here anglo indians live here there is a club where all people come and join this is a central business district we have bazaar here these are the administrative quarters so this is a port model so port is very important for colonial powers because it was the economic fulcrum for them so fort and maidan for their security examples are kolkata's fort william and chennai's fort st george